नमस्कार वी शेल नाउ बी बिगिनिंग विथ आवर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इन आवर कोर्स ऑन सेल्स एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मैनेजमेंट एंड दिस टॉपिक इज मैनेजमेंट ऑफ सेल्स टेरिटरीज नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक वी शेल बी कवरिंग इन टू लेक्चर्स विच इज लेक्चर थर्टी फोर एंड लेक्चर थर्टी फाइव एंड द वेरियस कॉन्सेप्ट विच वी शेल बी डिस्कसिंग इन दिस चैप्टर आर a sales territory the meaning of a sales territory rationale behind formation of sales territories the procedure for setting up or revising sales territories the management of sales territories and routing and scheduling of sales personnel in the sales territories so this is what we shall be discussing uh, in this in the next two lectures to begin with first let us discuss what is a sales territory now a sales territory comprises both existing customers and potential customers and they, these are uh, you know the entire group of existing as well as potential cus customers when entrusted to a sales person or when assigned to a sales person becomes a sales territory so a sales territory comprises both in external uh, both existing customers as well as potential customers who are assigned to a sales persons now most companies group customers and assign them to a sales person or to a dealer or to a distributor or a marketing organization and link these to a geographic territory however a sales territory may or may not be linked to a geographic unit and may or may not have geographic boundaries yet most companies do so now the fundamental underlying the definition of a sales territory is that a sales territory is made up of customers both current customers as well as prospective customers rather than a geographic unit so the fundamental concept here is the customer whether he is an existing customer or he is a potential customer the focal point is on the customer and not the geographic area that is why we say a sales territory may or may not be linked to a geographic unit and may or may not have geographic boundaries it comprises existing and potential customers who are assigned to a dealer or a distributor or a sales person or a marketing organization which most often get linked to the territory now uh, get linked to a sales territory now a viable sales territory is one which comprises customers who would be willing to buy a company's product and who would also be able to buy the company's product what we are talking of here is that these customers uh, you know whether current or prospective should be those who have a desire to buy a product or service offering and they also have the ability to pay for the same and this is what makes the uh, makes the territory a viable territory so a viable sales territory is one which comprises customers who would be willing and able to buy the company's products now yet in spite of the fact that the focal point or the or the focus here is the customer and not the geographic unit yet most companies form sales territories and link it with a geographic unit most commonly a sales territory is synonymous to a geographical area like south delhi could be a sales territory for executive a or north delhi could be a sales territory for another executive sales executive b b so but depending upon the type of companies and the product category which the company uh, you know is dealing with depending upon Uh, you know uh, the class of customers sales territories may be formed uh, the division you know of these territories could also be done on the basis of the technical skills of the uh, employees of the or of the sales personnel so companies must not only uh, focus on the geographic unit but very often uh, they also uh, you know uh, take care of the technical skills and abilities of the sales personnel and then uh, they link it up with a uh with a unit or with a a customer base and they define it as a territory so most commonly it is synonymous to a geographic area but depending upon the type of companies and the product category sales territories may also be formed on the basis of the class of customers they may also be you know done on the basis of skills of the employees and uh, it is very very important here to uh, reemphasize the point that uh, you know the while while these uh, while a sales territory comprises existing and prospective customers and and may or may not be linked to a geographic unit uh, yet most companies do so and they form the sales territories and they link it up with a geographical unit uh, it's very important here also to emphasize that it is not only the creation of a sales territory that is important but these sales territories may need adjustments readjustments revisions etc uh, they may need to be modified from time to time depending upon the market 
conditions. So, uh, we, when we speak about a sales territory, uh, we define it in terms of the customer base which is assigned to a salesperson or to a marketing unit, be, that, be it the dealer or the distributor. And uh, this customer base here uh, could be the current customer base or the prospective customer base put together, assigned to a salesperson is what constitutes a sales territory. Again, the focus is on the customer and not the geographic unit or the geographic territory, uh, yet companies do link it with a geographical unit and depending upon the type of company and the kind of products that the company is selling, for example, technical products, etc., sales territories may be formed uh, and they may also be formed on the basis of the class of customers. The division could also be done on the basis of skills of the salesperson because the knowledge, skills and abilities of the salesperson are extremely important and uh, they must be a best fit or a good fit between uh, their knowledge, skills, abilities and the kind of products they are dealing with or the customers they are handling. So, uh, depending upon the type of company and the product categories, sales territories may also be formed on the basis of the class of customers, they may also be formed on the basis of the technical skills of the sales personnel, but in most cases uh, the sales territory is linked to a geographic unit. And, but yet the focal point remains the customer. What becomes more important uh, is the customer, whether it is the current customer or the prospective customers who are assigned to a salesperson uh, or to a dealer or to a distributor who actually, which, this is what actually is a fundamental definition of a sales territory. So, a sales territory comprises customers, both actuals and prospective assigned to a salesperson. Now, what is the rationale behind formation of sales territories? Now, sales territories, uh, you know, lead to improvement in sales performance as we shall see shortly and this brings in a lot of benefit for the organization. It leads to, uh, you know, a, you know, high profit sales revenues, uh, it leads to larger market shares, it leads to customer generation, it leads to customer re retention. So, uh, sales territories uh, overall help an organization perform much better in terms of sales, in terms of revenue, profits, market shares uh, and, and customer, uh, you know, generation, customer retention. So, overall what we are talking of that uh, when organizations form sales territories, uh, they are benefited in a huge way, in a big way and uh, clear cut, uh, you know, peripheries are demarcated within which sales persons must perform, uh, within which they must attain their sales quotas and uh, the sales force, force is kept motivated towards rewards and incentives earned for their performance in those sales territories and they continue to bring profits for the organization. So, uh, in a nutshell what we are talking of is that, uh, you know, sales territories need to be formed because they bring, they, they lead to, uh, you know, improved performance of the organization in terms of, uh, you know, better market coverage, increased market coverage uh, by the salesperson, uh, you know, customers are better taken care of and salespersons know uh, the areas or uh, the territories within which they must perform and or conduct their activities. So, customers are, uh, you know, uh, given more attention to uh, both selling and non-selling activities can be conducted, uh, sales volume uh, can be generated, a company can earn profits, market shares. Uh, and overall the organization can benefit. Also, because salesperson performance get links to uh, the incentives and commissions, uh, you know, uh, based on the kind of performance they would, uh, you know, or the kind of effort they would put into the sole territories and the kind of uh, performance uh, they, they, they are they can you know bring for the company. So, because of this reward linkage with their performance uh, in the in, 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 in a well dis defined specific territory, uh, the sales force is kept motivated and they continue to bring profits for the organization. So, uh, the, the it's a sales territory and formation of sales territories affects the organization at large and it also affects salesperson's performance in their respective territories, uh, which means that they can earn higher incentives and rewards and that keeps them motivated, it keeps their morale high and uh, you know, uh, it makes them perform better uh, day to day. Now, let us go a little more into this and see how sales territories 
uh, help organizations and help sales force. Sales territories help increase market coverage. Uh, not having salespersons in prospective geographical areas could mean that a company could lose out on new business opportunities, which would then be taken advantage of by the competitors. So a proper creation of sales territories helps in assuring a proper market coverage. Salespersons know their area of operation. They know the customers that they have to cater to. They can give more attention to those customers. Uh, they can give more attention to current customers. So they'll spend more time on the sales call uh, you know, with the prospective customers and be able to win over the competitors' customers as well. So this helps both uh, in customer retention as well as new customer generation. Because salespersons know their area of operation, uh, they know the customers that they have to deal with. So they, give, they can give more attention to their current customers, uh, which would mean, uh, you know, uh, follow-up calls, goodwill, you know, better customer relationships. Uh, when they when they when they call upon their existing clients or customers, they also get to know uh, the problems being faced by the current customers, and the salespersons could offer solutions to these problems uh, through uh, the products or services that they can offer. And this would mean that the uh, the existing customer would become would be more satisfied, uh, would have more uh, you know confidence with the salesperson and with the organization. And this would mean future business for the salesperson and the organization. On the other hand, because they know uh, their, their area of operation, they can also spend time on, uh, you know, developmental selling, which is earning new customers. Uh, they can uh, make calls to prospective customers, make presentations, uh, you know, and uh, may be able to win over the competitors' customers as well. So this would mean new customer generation. So sales territories help both, uh, you know, in customer retention as well as customer generation. Sales territories should be very carefully formed and must be optimal in size to ensure proper coverage of customers economically and conveniently. It must be ensured that the majority of the time that the sales force spends uh, is with the customer and not uh, just in travel. So they must be also, it must be ensured that there is an equitable uh, workload, uh, distribution of workload and there is an efficient distribution of workload which uh, the salespersons can manage uh, effectively and efficiently and be able to contribute towards organizational profits. Uh, second, well-defined uh, sales territories can help improve sales and profit performance, lead to higher market shares. As we just said that, you know, when people know their area of operations, they can put in more effort in those areas of operation, in those well-prescribed uh, territories. Also, the coordination of place and promotion decisions, place being the third P and promotion being the fourth P of the uh, marketing mix. So the coordination between the two as well as coordination between uh, personal selling, advertising and other elements of the uh, communication mix or the promotion mix will help increase sales performance. A uh, sales personnel play a very key role in synergizing the effects of advertising and personal selling. We have discussed this in our introductory lectures on this particular course. Also, uh, third, sales territories help in sales planning and effective control. Salespersons' roles and responsibilities as well as the uh, quotas and you know that have to be achieved can be fixed and their performance can be better controlled with respect to attainment of these quotas and uh, the selling expenses, uh, attainment of sales targets, sales volume targets and selling expenses. Uh, salespersons can be better evaluated when assigned to a territory as the sales territory acts as a basis for evaluation. However, while uh, sales managers are doing this, they must be very careful to take into you know, account and to address uh, the problems and challenges specific to a territory. Uh, you know, there may be a territory which, where, has, where there is very little potential or there may be a territory where there is huge potential. There may be a territory where there is immense competition. There may be another territory where competition is less. Uh, there may be a territory where, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, this, the, the, the uh, Overall expenses, uh, expenditures incurred, uh, travel, boarding, lodging are very high and there may be other territories where it is not so high. So, uh, you know, while evaluating sales personnel with respect to, uh, you know, target achievement or quota achievement as well as uh, while assessing them in terms of, uh, you know, the selling expense ratio, it is very, very uh, important that sales, sales managers, uh, you know, address problems and challenges specific to the territory uh, because otherwise uh, the appraisal or the evaluation may, may turn out to be unfair and unjust which would lead to demotivation amongst the sales force. So good territorial designs help in minimizing 
selling expenses and maintaining a very healthy uh, sales volume and selling expense ratio. Selling expenses can be better controlled uh, when territories are prescribed and because of sales volume uh, derived from increased market coverage, uh, you know selling expense as a percentage of uh, sales gets reduced. So, that again means that uh, overall uh, the company would be able to earn very high net profits. So, what we are saying is that selling expenses can be better controlled and because of the sales volume derived from the increased market coverage, sales expenses as a percentage of sales gets reduced and uh, selling expenses will be much less as compared to uh, you know the kind of sales that can be generated and this would mean that net profits are something which would increase. Uh, sales territories also help improve customer relationships. Sales people are resigned to specific groups of customers. They are able to spend more time with, with them as I just said. They can call upon them post sales. Uh, they can inquire on the customers problems uh, you know and they can also uh, you know suggest uh, remedies or solution to those problems through their products and services. They can better understand the needs and problems. They can uh, you know f f offer you know solutions to them and and follow up calls lead to goodwill and better customer relationships and salesperson can achieve uh, and exceed quotas consistently. Overall sales territories help enhance sales force effectiveness and efficiency. Uh, the sales quota for a salesperson can be more realistically determined as it will be based upon uh, the company's share of market potential in the particular territory. So, while the quota is being fixed the market potential uh, would be judged as well as the territorial market potential would also be judged and accordingly quotas would be set which would be more realistic. So, uh, this would allow employees to earn to the best of their capabilities and thus stimulate them uh, towards achievement of higher sales targets. Uh, they would be uh, you know uh, more interested uh, to achieve such targets which they feel are realistic and attainable and uh, so the employees would be able to uh, perform well and earn to the best of their capabilities. A uh, good territorial design will help them be productive and also help them utilize their selling time in the best possible manner. Workload is, is perceived uh, as will be, will be workload would also be perceived as equitable and the morale amongst the sales force would be kept high. So, we see that uh, you know uh, when, when companies form sales territories it not only helps the organization uh, at, at the macro level but also helps uh, the sales force performance uh, at the uh, it contributes significantly to sales force performance at the micro level. Now, let us come to the procedure for setting up or revising sales territories. Now, as we just said uh, a, a good territorial design is very, very important and it must ensure equal opportunity in terms of uh, sales potential as well as equal workload for salespersons across all sales territories. Now, um, when I a few minutes ago I mentioned that when we talk about sales territories they often uh, get linked or related to a geographic unit or a geographic base and uh, it is often seen that most of these territories differ in terms of their characteristics not all of them are similar they, some you know in, in, not all of them are similar in terms of potential in terms of competition in terms of you know um, the other kind of characteristics uh, you know uh, challenges and complexity. So, uh, while uh, those issues are important and need to be addressed uh, it, it is even more important that the salespersons must perceive that equal opportunity is being granted to them uh, to, to, to generate sales, uh, to earn incentives, to earn rewards and workload is equal for all of them. Because if there is some kind of an inequity, it would again lead to demotivation among sales force. So, uh, we go back to Stacey Adams equity theory, where uh, you know we spoke that uh, each and every employee or each and every salesperson often thinks of equity or equitable treatment being meted out to him in terms of opportunities, in terms of rewards, etc. So, here it is very, very important that you know um, equal opportunity is provided to the sales personnel across territories and this opportunity should be in terms of the sales potential as well as in terms of the uh, you know uh, the, the reward and the incentives that they can earn along with achievement of sales targets. Also, uh, there must be a feeling of equitable workload. None of the salesperson should not feel that some of them have huge 
are, you know, uh, and huge responsibilities to undertake and lot of work to do and the others feel that uh, it is actually not too much of load for them. So, if, if workload is not equitable, that itself would also uh, make the sales force or feel demotivated. So, one uh, is providing them with equal opportunity uh, to generate sales. So, this would mean, uh, e you know, equal opportunity in terms of sales potential and this again, as I said, would get related to the rewards and the incentives and the commissions, which, which the sales force could earn or could, uh, could you know, uh, be able to earn if they perform well. And the second is in terms of the kind of workload where it must be, uh, you know, ensured uh, that the salesperson uh, gets, does not feel that they are overburdened and people elsewhere are lesser burdened. Otherwise, it would lead to some kind of a demotivation, or or, or they would it, it would lead to uh, you know a lowering down of morale uh, in the sales team or in the sales force across territories. Now, if you remember when we spoke about Stacey Adams' theory uh, of uh, you know equity theory of motivation, we spoke that uh, people look for equity in terms of the kinds of efforts that they are putting in, as well as the kind of rewards that they are getting in. Now, here again, if uh, there is uh, you know uh, in if, if there is a if it is realized that equ there is an unequal opportunity, which means that some territories are highly lucrative and have huge potential for sales, and others do not then people who are uh, sent to territories where there is huge potential would be very happy because they would have a lot of opportunity to earn sales, generate sales and earn, prof earn commissions and incentives. Uh, on the other hand, those who uh, are, are actually placed in territories where there is lesser potential would have lesser opportunity to generate sales and they would have lesser uh, you know opportunity to earn profits uh, sorry to earn rewards and incentives so this would mean that there would be an feeling of inequity with respect to uh, opportunities and uh, based on the opportunities the kind of efforts that they would put in would also uh, you know vary because though wherever there is a lot of opportunity uh, people would put in efforts you know and try to get maximum where there is lesser opportunity people may not be motivated to put in much, too much of an effort because the lesser opportunity may also mean there is huge amount of competition there and so it's very very difficult to make sales so this again gets related to rooms expectancy theory also uh, where effort gets related to performance and performance gets relate, related to rewards so if you put all that together it's very very important that uh, salespersons must perceive that there is equal opportunity for them to perform well in the market and earn incentives, commissions, rewards. They must also feel that the workload that is being given to them is something which is very, very equitable and fair. Now, there are four different steps that are involved in setting up and revising sales territories. We start with selecting a basic control unit, then determining the location of and sales potential in the control unit. Uh, combining control units and deciding basic territories by using the build-up method or the breakdown method and then making adjustments and forming final territories. So, let us discuss uh, each one of these in little detail. So, first we start with selecting a basic control unit which is the first step in setting up sales territories. A control unit is a geographical unit or a territory base and it could be a state, it could be a city, it could be a district or it could be a town. Of course, we started with this uh, you know, premise that a sales territory does not always mean a geographic unit, but yet most companies uh, link uh, is, you know a prospective and existing customer base with a territory. So, uh, here the it is we first decide on a control unit and a control unit is a geographic unit or the territory base and it can be a state, it can be a city, it can be a district or it can be a town. Now, it is always feasible to choose the smallest control unit so that the market potential as well as the company sales potential can be easily uh, determined and adjustments with respect to the increase and decrease of the size of territory later on can be possible. So, it is always better to start with a small control or, or the smallest control unit. Also at a micro level when you have small control units it is seen that they are more stable and less prone to change. So, uh, it is always feasible that you choose the smallest control uh, unit uh, and, and this is the first step which we do where we look where we identify uh, you know a, a basic unit which could be a state, a city, a district or a town. 
Second is determining location of and sales potential in control units. Now, this is the second step which involves finding the location and assessing the sales potential in each of the control units. A concise and precise definition of the buyer here is very, very important. Now, buyer here will mean both prospective buyers as well as actual or existing buyers and uh, you know a precise definition or a description of the buyer is required and based on the profile uh, or, you know the um, of the current and prospective buyers of products in a particular region uh, the <coughs> the the uh, the customer base is actually identified. So, a concise and precise description of buyers is required and based on the profile, uh, the current and prospective buyers of products in a particular region are identified. Um, what is important here is to very carefully define your buyer. What do you mean by the buyer? And once you define the buyer based on his characteristics, based on his profile, the current and prospective buyers of your product in a particular region can be identified. Now, after they are identified and the numbers are determined, the next step is to identify the total sales potential for all the customers in each of the geographical control units. So, this would require one, estimating the market potential and the market forecast and two, classifying the customers based on their sales and profits potential. So, this brings us to the ABC analysis. We have also discussed about the ABC analysis in another lecture, where what we do is that we the customer names are entered in a reverse order of their sales and profit potential starting from the highest to the lowest and the sum of all denotes the total potential. Customers whose sales and profit potentials add up to 70 percent of the total are categorized as A. Those whose sales and profit potentials add up to 20 percent of the total are categorized as B and the balance are categorized as C. So, uh, the market potential is then utilized to create the sales potential by taking into account market conditions, for example, the market share, the existing competition, the economic conditions, etc. And this information is then utilized to determine the sales coverage and the sales territories. Now, the third step uh, in setting up of territories is to combine control units and decide basic territories by using the build up method or the breakdown method. And the job here is to uh, obtain a rough approximation of the sales territories. No adjustments are considered as regards change in market conditions or uh, you know territory characteristics. It is assumed that the, the all the sales territories are the same, the sales territories exhibit no differences and all the sales persons are of average ability. Nobody is too good, nobody is too bad, they are all the same. So, the assumption that is made here is that the sales territories exhibit no differences and the sales personnel are of average ability. So, this stage then also involves determining the territory shape and this is a very crucial decision uh, which, which, the, which, which, which the company should uh, you know take because the shape of the uh, territory affects both the selling expenses that the salesperson will incur as well as the sales coverage that he could actually address, you know uh, you know uh, take in, t t give attention to if he is performing well and if he is giving adequate attention so the best shape is the one which minimizes the time on travel on road and maximizes uh, sales potential three commonly used shapes are the circle the wedge and the clover leaf. Now, the circle uh, is a shape which is suitable when customers are evenly distributed. The salesperson is usually based at the center. Uh, the wedge is suitable for territories where there is a mix of urban and non-urban areas. The salesperson starts from the urban center which acts as the hub or the center point and by balancing the urban and non-urban calls, the travel time can be equalized between uh, neighboring wedges. Uh, then we have the clover leaf where which is suitable when customers are located randomly in a territory. It is very, very popular amongst industrial marketers as compared to uh, you know uh, market um, as compared to companies dealing with uh, consumer products. So, we shall be discussing uh, these uh, shapes uh, in, in our lecture on routing and scheduling which will be the next lecture. Now, the two basic methods which are used for deciding sales territories, the build up method and the breakdown method. Uh, again, we shall be dealing with the two methods in greater detail in the next lecture, but to give a brief uh, you know uh, explanation of what the build up and breakdown is. The build up method is based on the premise that the workload of salesperson must be equal and the territory is decided upon by building up from control units, but keeping in mind that the workload of the salespersons is equalized. 
and the breakdown method on the other hand is based on the premise that sales potential of territories must be equal so that everybody gets an equal opportunity uh, to 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 sell well to sell more and to earn uh, you know rewards and benefits so the territory is decided upon by building up from the control units but keeping in mind that the sales potential of the territories is equalized finally uh, we come to making adjustments and forming final territories. Now, we started with an assumption that uh, all territories are the same, they exhibit no differences and the salesperson's abilities uh, are the same. Yet, uh, we see that you know there, there, there are differences all, always and uh, you know while tentative sales territories are drawn, these may need to be adjusted keeping in mind sales coverage complexities like varying selling efforts and styles, market potential, co competition, cust customer type, etc. Uh, also road conditions and transport facilities etc. So, this would require the readjustment and forming of final territories would require determining the number of customers both actuals and prospects, the location, the size and profitability of each of them in a sales territory, deciding on the number of calls which should be made uh, to the various uh, categories of customers A, B, C, the frequency of calls that, uh, that you know for A, B, C and the duration of each call uh, for uh, the A, B, C category of customers, uh, each of those customers in A, B and C. Also calculating the number of calls that can be made in a day and the length of time between two calls which would be the travel time between uh, customer A and customer B for different ca categories of customers. So, keeping in mind all of this uh, adjustments may need to be made uh, to the tentative territories and uh, final territories would then be formed. Keeping in mind that the workload for the salespersons is equitable and keeping in mind that the sales potential for the different territories is equal. With this we come to an end of this particular lecture. The references are uh, you know, still Kandev, Govani, Puri, uh, Pearson India Education, Panda and Saidev Sales and Distribution Management 2011-2012, uh, Oxford University Press and uh, then we have Havaldar and Kavale Sales and Distribution Management 2017, Megro Hill. This brings us to an end uh, of uh, the fourth lecture on the seventh module of this course. We shall be continuing with this topic. Uh, in the next lecture which will be lecture 35. Thank you.